One of the things you want to remember is where you came from. Hallelujah. Where you came from. What's God been doing in your life? Amen. Have you given an opportunity to work in your life? Oh, glory. <laughs> I want to go to Psalm 103 right off the bat. Glory to God. Psalm 103. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together because what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. The only way you can bless the Lord is by praise and worship in this arena. You bless him. You exalt him. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not his benefits. I want you to know that with salvation, there are benefits. So many people just end with salvation. There are benefits with your salvation. That's why the word says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. In other words, you're to fight for things. God has it all placed before me and you, but we got to fight to get it. So forget not the benefits. And what is the benefits? He forgives our what? Iniquities. He forgives our stupidity. Amen. Amen. He forgives us for wrong decisions. When you do what? Repent. He says you must forgive others so that he can forgive you. So if you're still holding a grudge or bitterness towards someone or whatever it is, unforgiveness, you need to forgive them, bless them, and put them in the hands of God. Why? So you can be blessed. There will be persecution. People will come against you. Forget not those benefits who forgives our iniquities, our sins. And then what does he do? He heals our diseases. Are you sick? Have you have a disease? He says he heals your diseases. He says he redeems our life from destruction. He crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. This is every morning. He satisfies your mouth with good things. Hello? Good things. Things that are righteous. Things that are positive, not negative. Amen. Why? So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Does everybody get it? Amen. Hallelujah. This is a benefit. This is a promise. These are the benefits of God. They're those who are walking upright with him. But you can't expect these things if you're not because he's a covenant king. He maintains his covenant with me and you as you maintain your covenant with him. Amen? Amen. In John chapter 1. You know, God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's lack of understanding. One of the things people lack that they're still, they don't realize that they're fighting powers of darkness. They still lose that sight. They think that their influence is everything of their own. Amen? In John 1, verse 1. Let's speak it together. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Mm. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. In other words, the word of God, when he speaks, the word creates. So God thinks, the, the word Jesus speaks, and the Holy Spirit moves. So the Father thinks, he thinks it. When he thinks it, Jesus speaks it, and the Holy Spirit moves. Does everybody get it? That's why the Holy Spirit is associated with all things that are going on. Because he is the Spirit of God. He is the breath of God. So when dad thinks, Jesus speaks, the Holy Spirit moves. Boom. And it continues. Now the Word of God, things that he spoke don't come to an end. They continue. So even right now, everything is upheld by what he spoke thousands of years ago. It's still upholding. The whole universe is upheld by what he spoke. Nothing stops. So there's constant movement. His word is not dead. His word is alive. So it's constantly moving, upholding all things. In verse 5, oh, verse 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and darkness does not comprehend it. Hello. 
until you accept light. See, you can't comprehend it. But when you accept Jesus, who is light, then something begins to change. It's like a switch goes on. Oh, there's light. Now, what happens is you begin to change because you begin to desire light and you begin to reject darkness. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for as a, as a witness and to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. See, we are witnesses of the light. We are actually some, we are the return of the light. But there's a true light that's going to come soon. It says he was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. Jesus, he was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. In other words, they accepted the light, they became light, and now they're able to comprehend more light. These individuals were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. This is a born-again state of being where you're born again in the eternal realm and removed from the temporary realm. So we become eternal lights, not temporary mites. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, and it says something powerful. It says, and the word became flesh. Now, who's the word? Jesus. But see, he didn't have a name yet. When this happened, he didn't have a name. But dad had it all planned out. He said, I'm going to send my word. I'm going to make a body out of my word for him. I'm going to send my spirit in him. I'm going to actually be him because he's actually, I'm going to pull him out of my bosom. <laughs> and it's actually going to mean it's going to go. But I'm going to give him a name called Jesus. That's my business card. <laughs> I have a walking, living business card, says the father. That's going to pay the price and make a way for all my children to have been deceived, taken by darkness, wounded and hurt, lied to, taken captive. I'm going to come and I'm going to speak through my son that they may know the way. And I'm going to leave them weapons. But I got to get the idiot out of the way first, called the devil. Oh, hallelujah. So the word became flesh, dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So, here we are, known as the spirit of truth is coming. Grace is God's plan. Amen. So he says, I'm going to make a way of escape from you because this is called grace, my plan. And what are we going to escape? The deception of the devil and the wrath of God and hell. So the word is God. In other words, he gave us here a summary. This is kind of like a summary. The word is God. It's a complete summary of what was manifested. What he was bringing is a reality that there's a battle between light and darkness. Amen? There's a battle not only a battle between light and darkness in the temporary realm, but in the eternal realm. And that battle continues. Because the light of man was getting taken out by darkness, so the true light of love <laughs> came to offer a way of escape from deception, death, hell, and the grave. So, Daddy said, I'm coming. He planned us all. See, but there's something important you got to understand. He can't do anything against his own word. So he set up time sequences of things to be manifest. That's what are called the feasts of the Lord. So the feasts of the Lord, he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a clue to everyone. I can't reveal everything to everyone, but I'm going to reveal everything to my children by my spirit. I'm going to tell them things to come and prepare them. I'm going to visit them in revelations, dreams, and visions. I'm going to bring them to places they never thought. I'm going to give them a new spirit where they become brand new. 
Will they know me as a father and them as my sons and daughters? So he set up this whole arena and prepared it. See, before he even came, he came already. Before you and I came, he came already because there's no distance in time in his realm. It said that he'd already come and paid the price before you and I even considered or even considered. Everything was done in the spirit realm. And then he came, then he had to come to fulfill what he does. So he set up a time sequence of everything called the Feast of the Lord, seven meaning complete and perfect. So all of these feasts were an arena where God would come himself and fulfill each single one. So it had let mankind know, give them a clue, those who are willing to follow him, in preparation for every feast that's about to be fulfilled. Is everybody okay? And Revelation chapter 19. You know, the word says God is love. So everything that's been created was love's creation. It's his creation. It's called love's creation. Does everybody get it? Everything was created out of love. He is love. If Look it. God is so enormous and so powerful and so love. Light is pure love that you and I can't even get near him we rip apart that's why he sets up an arena so that we can get close to him through his spirit through his blood see because if he showed up right now in his fullness everything would go it explode it can't hold him nothing can hold God he always was always will be he is past, present, and future. You and I were created in the time sequence. So for you and I, it's kind of difficult for these peanut brains to comprehend eternity. Or what was, what is, and what's to come. All kind of, I mean, it's just kind of hard to comprehend God. Amen. And let me tell you, try, stop trying to figure him out. You never will. Amen. He's given us sufficient to know what, what's about him and who he is. He's paid the price. He's got witnesses. He even wrote it in a book for me and you. And this Bible is true. In Revelation 19, verse 11, let's speak it. Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. So there's a war going on, and that war is constant. That's why many people fall, get taken out of position, influenced from the enemy to make wrong decisions. It says his eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God, the Word that became flesh. And the armies in heaven, clothed with fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. That's me and you coming, returning. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, with it, with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And his, on his robe and on his thigh it is written, King of kings and Lord of lords. So this is the conclusion. Does everybody got it? So we have a, kind of a summary, then we got a conclusion. Here's the conclusion. We will return with him. I want you to know that we are the generation of the Lord's return. We have a hard time with that because we get so busy and caught up in life and everything. But the time and seasons and sequences and the things that have been fulfilled lets us know where we are, where we stand, and what's getting ready to happen next. And John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Everybody knows this usually. John 3.16. They read the scripture, but don't finish it. <laughs> what 
What does it say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal everlasting life. To believe in him means to follow. Amen? So you can say, I believe Jesus and not follow. He says, you don't believe me because you don't follow me. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And he who follows him or believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe or follow is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that he has been, that has been done in God. God so loved. In other words, he's the love. Love's creation. That's why he created everything. Love the world to turn the hearts of man. He came because God is love. To turn the hearts of man from evil to him. In Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, starting at verse 1. Let's speak it. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for your own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in a form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking a form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of, um, of men. And being found in appearance of, as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the what? Death of the cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven, on earth, and those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Now this is powerful. Very powerful. So there was something. He came to become obedient to the death of cross. Why? Because the cross is a representation, representation of exchange. That's where you and I, that's where you and I get to see, because when you and I come to Jesus, we're, we're coming to the cross. And we're looking to him as the one who paid the price for me and you and the exchange was made. Because we are a death. We are under the rule of death. We are under the rule of Satan. We are offsprings of darkness. Children of the serpent. Headed for hell. Death. Jesus paid the price, made the exchange. So that you and I could no longer be headed toward death, but headed toward life. Amen? But there's something he had to do. He, made, he, did, he had to make the greatest price ever. Ever. In John 14. In verse 1, would you read it with me? Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may also be. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. And how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, I want you to grab hold of something. Because when, they, when Jesus said this, they understood because the tabernacle of God has three chambers. And they knew that the outer, the outer court was called the way. 
the holy place was called truth, and the most holy place was called life. So when Jesus explained to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life, they realized he's the tabernacle of God. They might not have fully understand that he was the tabernacle of God. What he was trying to explain to them is, I am the eternal pathway. I am the eternal port home, and no one can get home without coming through me. So what he was setting up, because we're talking about multidimensional now, Jesus was making an eternal port for all man that was willing to follow him to escape. Amen? Amen. Powerful. Now look, at, let's finish the rest of this. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And now what does he say? And no one comes to the Father except for through me. See, so people are trying to get home all kinds of ways. They've got all of these religious assumptions, doctrines, and all kinds of things, thinking, well, if I do this, I do this. Look, you've got to just follow Jesus. If you follow Jesus, you've got no problem. Every day I say, Lord, what can I do to please you? He said, be like me. Be like me. That's why he says, you must eat of my flesh, eat of my word, and drink of my spirit, and you'll maintain my character. Maintain my character. The way, truth, and life, the eternal porn home. Heaven which had been closed to all man because of the fall of Adam and Eve. And because of the fall of the Adam and Eve, the life of the flesh was now in the blood. They are no longer eternal. See, Adam and Eve were eternal beings. They didn't have blood in them. They didn't need it. The life of their body, their life, was in the spirit now, not in the blood. But after they fell, God removed them. And he killed an animal to cover them. He put uh, 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 an animal skin. Why? Because it was a shedding of blood. Because now life of the flesh is in the blood. So every all mankind now coming to the world had to have blood. Because they were no longer eternal beings. They were temporary beings until they become born again in the spirit. But Jesus had to manufacture his own blood. God had to create his own blood to make sin and atonement for all mankind because his blood was untainted. It was pure. That's why when Jesus said, the devil ain't got nothing to me, he was right. Oh, hallelujah. So he created an undefiled blood in himself and was the ultimate sacrifice that those who repented and followed him would have access to an entrance of the eternal port home, hmm. fulfilling his feasts. Now, the first three feasts were fulfilled. There's a feast called Passover, which was fulfilled when Jesus was on the cross. The Feast of Unleavened, which the word leaven means evil, was the day when Jesus went to hell. Then when he rose, an ascension, it was called the Feast of First Fruits. And he hung out for 40 days, ascended to heaven. Ten days later, he fulfilled the Feast of Pentecost, where everyone got filled and baptized in the Holy Spirit, even his mother, his sisters, brothers, and everyone else. That knew him. This was not a religious thing. This was a preparation because God wanted to put his spirit in man so they could learn how to fight and see and understand what's going on behind closed doors, behind the veil. The veil of what? Dimensional realms. In Ephesians 4. So we see here Jesus fulfilled the first four feasts now. Now, the next feast we know is called the Feast of Trumpets. And in the Feast of Trumpets, we out of here. And everybody who is not right with God will be left for his wrath. They will have to go through tribulation. So I want you to know that the Feast of Trumpets, that fulfillment, is the next feast to be fulfilled. And you don't want to miss it. And if you do, just make sure you don't take the mark. Let your head be cut off, starve to death, or hide. But other than that, don't be left behind. Because hell will be on earth. In Ephesians 4 and verse 7.
each one of us grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave, gave gifts to men. Now watch this. He explains it more. Now this he ascended. What does it mean but that he also first what? Descended into the lower pits of the earth. Now I want you to grab hold. When Jesus died, now you got to remember something. The only way he could qualify to get into hell was to take on sin. Or else he couldn't get qualified. Because righteousness couldn't go into hell. So Jesus took all of mankind's sin, qualified himself to get into hell. But when he got there, he took off sin. And he walked up to the devil, slap! Turned over the keys, homeless. Because you ain't got no home to go to no more. And Jesus took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And gave keys to me and you to bind and loose. Those are weapons. So that you and I could battle and fight. Amen? Now, there's something else he did when he went to hell. He took the keys away that locked in people in the prison. Paired, because no one had access to heaven yet. Unless God had chosen that person. But no one had access to heaven. They had access to paradise. It was a place in the earth. That's where you get all those religious people to call it, what it purgatory, but that ain't purgatory. It's called paradise. And in this paradise, Jesus, that's where all the saints were. It's called paradise. It was glorious. It was a garden. It was beautiful. And in this paradise, all those that were upright with God, when they died, they went there. And Jesus went and opened it up for everyone to go home because when he died on the cross, he opened the veil. Why? Because he set the eternal port home. So they went home. Now he went to hell. And when he went to hell, he said, anybody want to follow me? I'm giving you an opportunity to get out of here. Repent for your sins and follow me and you'll have an opportunity other than that. After I leave, there'll be no, no, no other opening to hell again. The only opening of hell will come for you to become judgment. So he gave opportunity for even hell to be opened for those who repented. That's why he says he went and ministered to them. Is everybody okay? Oh, glory. So that's what it means. When he descended, he went into the lower parts of the earth first. Amen? Amen. And, he, and, and he who ascended is also the one who descended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man and to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ or his presence and anointing. That we should no longer be idiots or children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind, wind of doctrine or influence of the demonic voices, by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But we should be speaking the truth in love and that we may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effect of working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love because we are created out of love. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. In Matthew 27. Love's creation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I remember what he's done, and I remember where I came from. Hallelujah. My wife remembers where I came from, too. Hallelujah. Matthew 27. Is everybody there? In verse 50, Jesus is on the cross. 
And he cried out again with a loud voice and he yielded up his spirit. He gave up his spirit. Into your hands I commit my spirit. I've said that a few times. Thought I was going to die. Verse 51. So when he committed, when he uh, uh, yielded up his spirit, that means he left his body and he went right to hell. Let me tell you, everything he touches changes. So his blood had to be shed first. Do you understand that? So he was hanging on the cross dripping blood because the spirit always follows the blood. Mm. Then, why? Because the blood is what cleanses the way. Amen? So the blood hit the earth. It was dripping. Jesus followed. Went into the depths of hell, right? Went and kicked butt on the devil. And when he did that, something physically happened in the tabernacle. It says here that behold, the veil of the temple was torn from in two from top to bottom. In other words, that's the manifestation. He said, I'm going to go release everyone. And the, and the earth quaked and the rocks were split. And the graves were open. In other words, tombs and graves were opened. And many of the bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. So they saw all of these bodies there. But I want you to grab hold of something. This happened when Jesus hit the earth, went into the realm, took the, death of, of the keys of the devil away. Graves were open. Then on the third day he rose. And here the bodies were out. When he rose, they rose. Resurrection. Resurrection power. Allowing them to have a new life. See, it was a manifestation of the old life, the old man getting born again into the new life of the new man. He was creating a new man so we might maintain a new creation in Christ according to his will and way. So it says here, now look at and the great verse 52. And the graves were open, and many of the bodies of the saints had fallen asleep, were raised. He means fallen asleep. Now, these were not individuals that were sinners. These were individuals that accepted Jesus in his ministry of three years that were there. No one else rose from the dead, only those who accepted him. And it says here, because they're the bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep in Christ were raised and coming out of the graves when after his resurrection so when Jesus rose from the dead they woke up Woohoo! they got up and they went into the holy city and appeared to many now snap can you imagine in Jesus' first year you might have known someone Maybe it was your grandmother, your aunt, who knows? And they died, but they knew they accepted Jesus. Three years later, or three and a half years, whatever it was, they come back alive, come knock, open the door. Hi! Whoa! <laughs> Snap and a half. Where you been? Man, I was in paradise. It was beautiful. But then Jesus told me, I'm coming home in the physical before and giving me another opportunity. Wow. So all of those saints came alive, went into the city. God used them. See, they were the first fruits of his resurrection. And they went into the city. I don't know how long they lived, but they were witnesses, weren't they? <laughs> Everything he touches turns into a witness. Glory, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Love's creation. Maybe it's the lover's creation, you know. He loves us. We can't even comprehend how much he loves us. Every time we do something wrong, we go, oh, God, no. He hates me. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. He can't hate. 
The only thing he hates is evil. He knows we're frail and boneheads. He knows we make mistakes. Hallelujah. He's just waiting. He said, come on, man. You don't need to get, fall off the bicycle. Get back up. Same thing. Get up. Let's go. I ain't left you. Ephesians 2.14. Let's read it. For he himself is our what? Peace. Who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity or hatred that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace. And that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. Wow. And he came and he preached peace to you who were far off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by what? One spirit to who? The Father. The Father. Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Again, he who is in Christ is a new creation. Old things have passed away. In other words, he made a new man. He made a new man. And in that, you and I become a new creation and a new man. Not that the old man still is gone. He's there. Amen? You know, on Friday night, I don't know if some, as for some of you who were here, I had a vision Friday night. And I saw the old man, the offspring of the serpent, which we were born in, because we were born in doctrine, and I saw the new man. And I saw chains in between the old man and the new man. Chains hanging there. And the Lord said to me, the devil can only access the new man through the old man. He says, and what he does is he contaminates, he defiles, and, he, and what he begins to do is draw, drain life out of the new man. See, that's why it's so important that you worship the Lord and get filled because the anointing is what breaks the chains. It breaks the yoke. It breaks, but some people just don't want to worship. And they're going to stay right the way they are. Because, see, you must deny yourself. Self must get out of the way. That's the old man. Too many people have the old man in front of them and a new man behind them. It must be reversed. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that the devil doesn't access us through the old man trying to sway or contaminate the new man from following or being drained of the life or even losing the entrance to eternity. Second Peter chapter 2. Second Pete chapter 2. Is everybody okay? You know, the old man loves his, sin, loves his sin, loves the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life, loves to fulfill self. Doesn't like to submit to God or obey God. Second Peter chapter 2. Second Peter chapter 2. Okay, verse 1. But there were also false what? Prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers <laughs> among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them and bring on themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be what? Blasphemy. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time, their judgment has uh, not been idle, but their destruction does not slumber. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them to chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment, 
and did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes and condemned them to destruction, making them an example of those who afterward would live ungodly, and delivered righteous Lot, who was oppressed by filthy conduct of the wicked. For the righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. And especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise authority. They are presumptuous, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil dignitaries, whereas angels who are greater in power and might do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord. Wow. In this, we've got to remember that these are areas where we have come from and these are areas where people are living. The word says in the latter days, latter days, there'll be more and more wickedness, imposters. Why? Because they're swayed by the evil one, aren't they? Amen? They're swayed by the evil one. They're swayed by the wicked one. Oh, hallelujah. Now I'm going to go to uh, chapter 1. In verse 2. To say, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his what? Divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness to the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, to your virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call an election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so a what? An entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In other words, he's talking about the eternal port. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. In verse 18, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 18. Let's speak it. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those, to us who are being saved, it is the what? Power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. He says, where is the wise, where is the scribe, where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish, foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign, Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. To the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. But those who are called, both Jews and Greek, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Verse 26. For you see your calling, brethren, that many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not mighty, many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish. Say, I've been foolish. <laughs> Everyone say, I've been foolish. I've been foolish. But I'm wise now. <laughs> but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are our, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Wow. Revelation 3. Mm. 
in verse 1. And to the angel of the church, Sardius, write, These things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works, so you have a name, and that you are alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found your works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. There, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. In other words, he's saying, turn from our all wicked ways. He who overcomes, uh, and you, sh verse 4, you, ha you who have, um, have a few names, even in Sardius, who have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord says to the churches. In other words, we're to walk worthy. Amen? Overcoming. In Deuteronomy chapter 30. We should be walking in resurrection power now through the Holy Spirit. That's why it's important to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Deuteronomy 30. Love's creation. Verse 19. I call to heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live, that you may love the Lord your God, that you will may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him, for he is your life and the life of your days, and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, to, and given them. In other words, for me and you, we have a free will to choose. That's why he says choose. Choose life. Free will to choose the one that died for you, the one that paid for you and made the exchange for your life. He paid the price for everlasting life on the cross. He's the one that opened the port to eternity. By his blood, we've been cleansed. And by his spirit, we are filled with the power of Christ. Amen? We have a choice. Every day we have a choice. We can choose. It's amazing how many times people choose death instead of life. They choose curses instead of blessings. Because of the influence. Because they're not recognizing the influence that's influencing them. Amen? 1 John chapter 5. Of course, if you're not going to a place where you're being taught, it, does, it makes it more difficult. This is not religious. This is not Bible study. This is training sessions. Amen? Why? Because this is, we're in a war. It's a military operation. First John chapter 5, verse 18. We know that who was ever born of God does not sin. In other words, he doesn't let sin have dominion over him. But he has been born of God. He keeps himself. In other words, he's vigilant, he's alert, and he's consistent. Because the devil comes as a roaring lion. See, it says roaring. Roaring meaning speaking. Influencing. He loves to push. He's the one that creates anxiousness, fear, anxiety. It says here, we know that who's ever been born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself. And the wicked one does not touch him, does not overcome him. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the what? Wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding because we partake of light, so we understand now. And that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, 
in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols and accursed things. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15 and verse 39. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of animals, another fish, another birds. There are also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. This is one glory of the sun, an another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. It is raised in corruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last man, Adam, became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural and after the spiritual. The first man was of the earth made of dust the second man is the lord from heaven as we and as was the man of dust so also are those who are made of dust and as the heavenly man so also are those who are the heavenly as we have borne the image of the man of dust we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man through the resurrection now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. But I'm going to tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has been put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor and your fight is not in vain. In other words, he just told us that this is the fulfillment of the Feast of Trumpets, which actually is the next resurrection. Because those who are dead in Christ will be raised. And those who are alive will be changed. So we're actually going to be resurrected, <laughs> changed on the way up. We'll be watching you, yo, but, and you'll be changing. No more blood. No more dumb thinking. No more lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. No more pain. No more sickness. Glorified body. And you're going to need a glorified body because your home will no longer be here on earth. Your home will be in Jerusalem, which is another dimension. But you will have to come back and forth because we will rule with the king. Does everybody get it? You have to have a glorified body because it takes you too long to travel there. Amen. You're going to think it and you're going to go. Amen? Glorified. You know, when you think about it, you know, the word says, man, if, you, if I compare all the things that I'm going through right now, there's no comparison for what's awaiting me. Amen. There's no comparison for all that. So why should I fool with sin? Let's rescue as many souls as we can and get the heck out of here. Amen? Amen. Praise God. We're ful fulfilling the final resurrection of the body. Amen. Then there'll be the resurrection of the wicked. And you don't want to be one of them. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Love's creation. We're it. We're the creation of his love. He didn't create us for anything else but love. That's what it's about. And perfect love casts out all fear. Amen? 
So that's why he constantly has to maintain this position of being that born-again state of being, eating and drinking of his presence and eating of his word, fellowshipping. It's important. You can't over None of us can overcome by ourselves. We'll get our butt kicked. And you'll be easily deceived without... Look at The only one that's going to help you overcome is the Holy Spirit. That's why God left his spirit here for me and you. It's amazing how many people come to salvation and stop. You need to be baptized on Holy Ghost, tongue speaking, casting out devils. Especially the ones that are in you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Who's in your mirror? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word and we remember the price Jesus paid. Thank you so much. Thank you. Allow us, Father, in the name of Jesus, to walk in a resurrection, born again state of being. That we may be continued to be of the first fruits of the resurrection life, signs and wonders to the world. Knowing that we're waiting for our change to become in the heavenly man, but the heavenly man is in us. The body might not be changed yet, but it's coming. Because he who's in us is greater than he who's in the world. So, Lord, let this word be rooted, grounded, and planted in love so it may grow and bear fruit for your glory in each and every one of us. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.